you identify any good practice yeah. in any country? Yes, there is. Um, there, there are two really great things that are happening um, in, in within countries. But actually, it's worth stepping back from that and talking about the international systems as well. The, 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 international, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, the Council of Europe, and the UN have all made really good statements about harmful practices against innocent infants and children within the last year or so. Um, and the, the, so there's some really, some really good statements coming out. We're yet to see implementation in many national contexts. Um, and, and the two examples I can give, one, one is Malta, where the, um, the, the, the government of Malta has enacted legislation called the Gender Identity, Gender Expression and Sex Characteristics Act. And what that did was recognize the right to one's own gender identity. But it also recognized a right to bodily autonomy. And it recognized a right that, that within that right to bodily autonomy, um, the, the act prohibits modifications to sex characteristics of infants and children without their consent. And it explicitly prohibits interventions for social and cultural reasons which are the kinds of reasons that we see when we look at things to do with parental distress and social discomfort with bodies that are different. So um, that's a really good example. Um, and also at the end of 2015, the, the Chilean health ministry, health ministry published a circular that suspended medical interventions in infants and children. Um, and we're yet to see what's going to come out long term in Chile, and I hope that we will see some some strong statements that would help to ensure that those practices are not, are not re-established or retrenched. But I, I think that the Council of Europe has got a, a couple of good statements. The Council of Europe was the first institution to say that intersex people have a right to not undergo sex-affirming interventions. Yeah? And that's a really good starting point because that says that, that, that we have a right to have sex-affirming treatments if we wish, and the right not to, yeah? Um, and fundamentally, it's about this principle of autonomy, yeah? Principle of self-determination. Um, and I think that that's a, a really important starting point because th there, there are some difficulties in, in disentangling what are sometimes necessary medical interventions from interventions that are purely cosmetic or are about normalizing bodies to make bodies appear more typically male or typically female. Um, and one of that, that's a big issue in Australia for us because we see um, repeatedly um, justifications for medical treatment that entangle you know, cosmetic normalizing rationales with rationales about um, uh, risk of cancer or, or risk of urinary issues. Um, so there's a need for it's possible to rule out medical interventions for social and cultural reasons, but there needs to be some oversight to ensure that other treatments can proceed, but do not, do not entangle those issues. Um, so I think there has to be some provision for necessary treatments and some oversight that ensures that treatments take place within a human rights affirming context that, that permit you know, they ensure that the, the, the children um, have the right to not undergo normalizing treatment until they choose otherwise, or if they choose otherwise.